G'day everyone and welcome to this record box tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to cover the fundamentals of record box. How do you set it up? How do you manage your files? How do you export to USB keys? Create playlists? Do things like tagging? And also some troubleshooting along the way as well. So I hope you find this video useful and it will be especially helpful if you're currently going to the club with just USB keys that aren't record box to analyze. There's a lot to be gained from using the record box software and hopefully this will help you get started. As you can see, my record box is currently completely empty and we're ready to import some music. However, first I wanted to talk quickly about the importance of file management. Currently, my music is messy, as you can see. It's all over the place. And this is a problem if you ever want to move computers in the future. If you buy a new laptop, for example, you want to pick up all of your music, put it on the new computer, and transfer your record box library over. If music is messy all over the place like this, or there's some, you know, tracks in your downloads folder, some on your desktop, and you start importing that into record box, when you move computers, this is going to be a little bit of a nightmare because Recordbox isn't going to know where to find the files. So what I recommend you do if you don't already have some sort of sorting regime for your music files is to basically put all the music you get into one folder before importing it into Recordbox. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a single folder. I'm going to call it a Recordbox Collection. And I'm basically going to select some tracks at random um, and I'm just going to paste it in the record box collection folder. That way, if I ever move computers, I can just pick up this folder record box collection, I can pick up my record box database, go to the new computer and point record box at that folder and all my music will be contained within there somewhere. So before we import music into record box, I just wanted to take a look at a couple of settings that you should be familiar with. If you click on files and then go to preferences, and then you go to the analysis tab, there's a few settings on this page which are important. There's one called track analysis mode, and there's two settings, normal and dynamic. Normal is for electronic music that has a really consistent beat, and dynamic is for music that may have fluctuations in the BPM. And this is more for things like live music and such. I play electronic music, so I can leave that as normal. Also, there's a BPM range setting. It's really important to make sure that this BPM range uh, basically includes the speed of the music that you're playing. I play Happy Hardcore, which is about 170 beats per minute. So I've selected 108 to 215 beats per minute to make sure my music's within that. What happens if your music falls outside of this BPM range is sometimes Recordbox may detect your music as being half the speed that it actually is, or potentially double the speed that it actually is. So just make sure this BPM range is, is within the limits of, of what music you play. Also down the bottom here, there's this setting called Analysis Process. There's two modes, Normal and Performance. By default, it's set to Normal. And basically what Normal mode will do is not use too much CPU power when importing and analyzing tracks. It's important to leave it on normal if you're DJing with Recordbox and you want to import music whilst you're DJing. This means that basically your computer won't eat up too much brain power trying to import tracks and play your tracks at the same time. It'll balance it out a lot nicer. However, if you want analysis to uh, complete as quickly as possible, it's worth setting it to the performance mode. And this means that as soon as you import tracks, it'll just use as much power as your computer's got to get through those tracks as quickly as possible. I personally have it set to performance. So now that we've checked out those settings, we're ready to do our initial import of music. As we put all of our music in one folder earlier, we can just click on the file menu up here on the top, select import, and go import folder. Then I'm going to browse to the location. I'm just gonna bring the browse screen across to this monitor. I'm gonna to go to my D drive and I am going to select a record box collection. What that's gonna do is import all my tracks. And as you can see, they're analyzing there on the left hand side. And the tracks is analyzed once we see the waveform that's appeared there. Step. 
So as you can see, we've got a collection of awesome music right here ready to go. But what happens when we want to add another track? Let's say we've, we've someone sent us a promo or we've downloaded something off Beatport or something similar. Well, what we want to do is first of all, find our file and we want to place it inside the location where all of our music in. Remember at the start, it's really important for us to keep our files in a consistent place. And then once we've moved the uh, music file to this certain location, we want to drag it in to Rekordbox. Now we can just click and drag files if we have the uh, collection selected up here. And then that will add it to the collection. You can also import an individual file by clicking on the file menu, selecting import, and then selecting import track and browsing to that individual file. However, I usually find that click and drag is much, much quicker. So now that we've imported music into our collection, a lot of people might notice that they have duplicate entries inside their collection. Now, Rekordbox doesn't have a way to remove duplicate tracks inside a collection. And the reason is, is because they're not actually duplicate entries. They're referencing different music files. This is a symptom of if your music is an absolute mess. It's maybe because you've copied the same music file to a different location on your hard drive and you've imported both of them. Uh, basically, it ends up where you've got basically the same song or two copies of the file um, you know, in different places on your computer that are in your collection. There's no way that Rekordbox can automatically determine, hey, these files are actually called the same thing, so I'm going to remove them because it would create all sorts of problems, essentially. And I'll explain what I mean. Basically, we've already got all of this music inside our collection. If I uh, find this track, uh, let's say Hixie Stonebank Higher, and I try and drag it in again, it's not going to import it, and you're not going to find it in here twice because the file's already there. However, if I copy the file and I drag it in, it will actually analyze it, and now we've got two. The only way to remove duplicates is either delete the source file uh, that's, that's in here, the copy, or basically uh, go through your collection, hold the control key, or I don't know what it is on Mac, <laughs> but basically select select the tunes, right click and say remove from collection. And uh, But it's probably worth, once you remove it, just going through and doing a little bit of clean up of your source files to make sure that there's uh, no duplicates. So now that we've removed duplicates from our collection, we're ready to create playlists. Playlists are logical groupings of music that allow us to better organize our collection and basically prepare for any gigs that we have coming up or parties or whatever we want. So clicking on the playlist tab here over on the left will reveal this little plus icon that's called create new playlist. Clicking on this button will pop out this little playlist icon and it will ask us to give the playlist a name. You can call playlists whatever you want, as long as it makes sense to you. What I normally do is basically call the playlists the names of gigs that I might be have, having coming up. So I might call this playlist Rocket Science, for example. And you can add as many playlists as you want. I can click on this one, 170. As long as these names are meaningful to you, that's all that matters. So what we've done right there, really simply, is create three playlists that we can put tracks in. Clicking on the collection window at the top will reveal all of our music again, and we can now add music to these playlists. And all you need to do is basically select the track you want to add to the playlist, and drag it over and drop it into the playlist. So let's say I want to add these three tracks, I want to play this at night 170 gig, I want to play these four tracks at uh, Hardcore Till I Die, and I want to play this one at Rocket Science. So we've dragged some music into those playlists. Now clicking on that will basically reveal the tracks that are here. And uh, now we've got our music all nicely divided up. You can have one track in your collection be in multiple playlists, that's not a problem. And playlists have something really cool, which I often do before I'm planning like a YouTube mix or something like that, is it allows you to order the tracks and how they will appear on the CDJs. You can only do this in playlists, not the collection. Uh, basically, you need to have uh, the uh, numbering column selected, which is selected by default. You can basically drag a track up and down. And let's say we want this track up the top. 
now that appears as number one. So when we use this playlist in basically Pioneer equipment, uh, that will be at the very top and it will be in this order and you can switch around the order as you see fit. And that's pretty much it. That's playlists. There's also another really awesome way within Rekordbox that we can manage our collection and that's called tagging. Tagging allows us to put a lot of context around the music that's in our collection in order to pull up tracks really, really quickly. And I'll show you how this works. Basically with the collection selected, there's this little icon here on the right hand side that's got a little tag icon and it's called display my tag configuration window. If you click on this icon, it pops out this little menu and it's got a few sort of categories contained within it. There's one called genre, components, situation, and also an untitled category down here. As you may notice, the genre box contains by default some genres. I've added a few, and basically adding a genre to this box is as simple as clicking the little plus icon, and it's called create a new my tag. So let's say that I have trance music, which is uh, not a genre that's listed here. I can create a new genre called trance. I, there's one called components and one called situation. So I might have uh, a situation called um, your sleep time, you know, some really relaxing music, and we can add basically these new options. So what this allows us to do with some music selected in our collection is tag music that's here with um, certain sort of attributes, if you will. So let's say this track, Finbar In Your Eyes, I've got this selected, it's a happy hardcore track. So what I'm gonna do is click on that and say, it's a happy hardcore tune, All right? Also in components, I might also wanna say that it's a piano track and it's pretty chill, so I might want to tag it as a sleepy tune. Let's do it for a few other things. So ham, anything for you, again, a happy hardcore tune. You know, it's, I don't know, might have some percussion. It might have, you know, lounge. <laughs> I don't know that happy hardcore would be lounge, but you get the idea. We're just gonna select an, another few things. I don't know, new disco, beat, midnight, and uh, you know, that one's a drum and bass one example. So what you do is you go through your collection, highlighting some tunes, adding the categories that you want, and um, then just basically going through and tagging everything. Once we've done that, there is this button up here called Display Hide Track Filter. Clicking on that will display this amazing menu and you'll probably see what's just about to happen. What we can do is now, since we've tagged some of our music, we've got some of the genre tags that we uh, selected earlier, New Disco, Happy Hardcore, Drum and Bass. If I click on Happy Hardcore, our collection will automatically filter and show all the tracks that we've tagged with Happy Hardcore. If I click on Happy Hardcore and I click on Piano, it will show the tracks that are tagged as a Happy Hardcore Piano track and so on and so forth. And you can use AND and OR operators at the top here if you want to get really technical, but most people seem to want to use AND for, for the most part. But you can see how this is really powerful, right? You can go through and if you spend a lot of time in your collection, you can say, uh, when you're DJing, I want, you know, that happy hardcore track, which has got, you know, piano influences and get to those tunes in your collection really quickly without having to sort of think in your head, I can't, you know, remember what that particular track name was. So tagging is a very powerful way to sort of categorize and work with your music within Recordbox and I highly recommend using it. So now that we've got some music in our collection and we've created some playlists, we're ready to export this music to a USB key or SD card for use in Pioneer DJ gear. So I've got a USB key here and I'm just gonna insert it into my computer and we will see it appear in Windows Explorer, as you can see right here. Now, the problem is in Rekordbox that there's no USB key showing here under devices, which is where removable media um, usually sits. Now, why is that? This is a problem on uh, basically Windows often, where uh, your USB key or SD card may be formatted with a file system called NTFS. The problem is that Pioneer DJ Gear does not support the NTFS file system. It needs to be HFS or FAT32. This isn't typically a problem for Mac users, but I'll show you how to get around it if you're on Windows. 
basically if you are in Windows and you right click the key and you select format and the key is over 32 gigabytes in size you're not going to get the option to format in FAT32 and XFAT doesn't work so there you need to basically get a couple of utilities off the internet which will uh, format the key in FAT32 for you and a link to a utility that I commonly use is in the description box below. So what I'm done is so what I'm going to do is run this utility, select my drive that I want to format, and then hit format drive. So now that our USB key is correctly formatted, you can see that it appears here under the devices window within record box. If you can't see the key, make sure that you've got the little toggle there next to devices set in the down position and you'll see all the USB devices that are attached. First thing we want to do is click on the little plus arrow next to the USB device and select all tracks. All tracks is essentially, think of it like the collection for your USB key. So if we click on collection, we can essentially select the tracks that we want to put on our USB key and drag that over to all tracks. And now what it will do is it will export that music for use on the USB device. We can also copy playlists over. As you can see, there's a section on our USB device called playlists. We can click on that and there's no playlist currently there. We can, again, create playlists manually and then add music to it. But what I want to do is copy our playlists that are on my computer over. So I'm just going to delete that one that I just created. And what I'm going to do is in playlists is I'm literally just going to drag it over, drag and drop it. And now that playlist is on my USB key and Recordbox has also automatically copied any music that was inside those playlists onto my USB key. And so you're never giving up. If we go to all tracks, we can see that it's there. And that's pretty much all you need to do to export music to USB key within Recordbox. I suggest that you just create a collection, create the playlist as you want, and then just drag the playlists over to the removable media and then it will export those files. If you have a fast USB key with USB 3 or USB-C, this will be a significantly faster process. Sometimes if you've got some slow USB devices, uh, it can take a little while, but I strongly recommend that you buy some good quality USB devices, uh, especially if you're playing out live um, because you don't want any, any failures. The last thing that I would mention is also make sure that if possible, every time you click on the little uh, USB icon and you hit this little eject button for removing the USB device. This makes sure, this makes sure that the Recordbox database has been finalized and is properly written to the key before um, you eject it. So make sure that there's no sort of damage to the Recordbox database. So just clicking on the little eject button there will eject the USB key and uh, now you're done. So now that we have a USB key in hand and we've exported it, we can insert that into the player. And I'm going to select USB. And then what I can do is go to playlist. And as you can see, here are the playlists that we exported. And the best thing about having record box prepared music is we get a full waveform to work with here and um, everything it just works really, really nicely. So I hope that helped you use Recordbox. And uh, if you have any queries or questions or comments, please let me know in the uh, comment section below. Thanks.